Support comes from... Entergy provides much more than power. We support science and engineering at local schools to build a brighter path to better jobs and help prepare the next generation. Because together, we power life. Entergy. Additional support provided by the Fred B. and Ruth B. Ziegler Foundation and the Ziegler Art Museum located in Jennings City Hall. The museum focuses on emerging Louisiana artists and is an historical and cultural center for Southwest Louisiana. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting with support from viewers like you. We want to keep our fundamentals strong, our agriculture, our forestry, our oil and gas. How diversified can the state's economy be? They started the cornerstone of this church in 1853 and it took three years to build. The resilience and splendor of St. Joseph's Cathedral. This year we have seven trees decorated inside and three outside. A Christmas tour of the mansion with Louisiana's First Lady. Hi everyone, I'm Andre Moro. Much more on those stories in a moment on this week's edition of SWI, but first a look at news making headlines across our state. The health care of hundreds of thousands of Louisianans is facing a new legal challenge after a ruling by a federal judge in Texas that the Affordable Care Act is unconstitutional. The decision risks throwing the nation's health care system into turmoil. Governor John Bell Edwards is warning about the elimination of health coverage for 480,000 people enrolled in the state's Medicaid expansion and 850,000 people with pre-existing conditions. I think it's unlikely to be affirmed at the U.S. Fifth Circuit or by the Supreme Court, and I do believe it's going to play out by going to the Fifth Circuit and then to the Supreme Court. That's going to take close to two years. In the meantime, uh, we've had announcements that came out of the Trump administration, out of the Department of Health and Human Services, particularly CMS, saying that nothing is going to change in the interim. Edwards was keynote speaker at a ceremony by the Louisiana Air National Guard's 159th Fighter Wing for about 100 airmen who will be deployed next year. Most will leave in the first months of 2019 for the Middle East. A new federal report says the number of homeless veterans in the state is up 6% this year compared to last. Overall, the Housing and Urban Development Report found a 7% decrease among the homeless in Louisiana, saying that 3,059 people were homeless on a single night in 2018. An LSU Boyd professor proposes a simple and relatively inexpensive way to prevent coastal erosion and protect the state's wetlands. R. Eugene Turner suggests backfilling all canals once used for oil and gas mining. He says filling the canals is a good restoration technique rarely applied in Louisiana. He estimates the cost is less than 1% of the total cost of the coastal master plan. Discounted rides home are being offered through the holiday in a partnership between the State Highway Safety Commission and Lyft. The aim is to reduce drunken driving incidents. $5 discounts will be available through New Year's Day in Shreveport, Monroe, Lake Charles, Lafayette, Baton Rouge, and New Orleans with the code RIDESMARTLA in all caps in the Lyft app. How much does the state's economic outlook hinge on oil prices that have continued to drop as we wrap up this calendar year? Also, the ongoing trade war with China and tariffs. What will that mean for Louisiana? Don Pearson, Secretary of the State Economic Development, is here to discuss how we fared in 2018 and look ahead to 2019. And so let's talk first about oil and tariffs and the impact on our state. Well, certainly those are both uh, impactful topics for us uh, as the number one uh, or number two, actually, uh, oil and gas producer in the nation. Uh, sometimes we're number one, but uh, essentially uh, a large part of our economy is uh, related with this drop. I think a lot of people look at it uh, with its impact on uh, maybe the revenues of state government, and that's appropriate. Uh, but it has other positive impacts in terms of manufacturing, uh, refineries, and when I say manufacturing, advanced chemical manufacturing. Uh, so as the decrease comes, uh, there's certain 
elements such as consumer spending that actually benefit by the lower oil price. Uh, we just have to be able to navigate those. And economic experts, though, uh, t when talking about the tariffs, they are concerned about that, especially if that becomes a real long-term situation. And we just don't know what that's going to do. Exactly. Uh, tariffs are challenging for us right now as a state. Uh, significantly, we're a large agricultural state. And not only do we produce a lot of agriculture, we aggregate much of America's agricultural product coming out of the Midwest and take it to our ports and transship it globally. So uh, both our agricultural economy and our port uh, production economy in terms of uh, their shipments are all being impacted by this uh, current tariff and trade war situation. Uh, we're hopeful that this is a, a short duration event and that we'll get back on track and we're very well positioned to uh, recover significantly and quickly uh, once some agreements are made between the U.S. and China. Big in the news this past week has been the huge $1.4 billion property tax exemption in uh, southwest Louisiana, Calcasieu Parish, for the building of uh, a huge project, a nearly $16 billion project there. So much is happening in the Lake Charles region. Uh, this is the Driftwood LNG, but signed off at the local level, goes to the state level. There have been some pushback, though, from groups like Together Louisiana, which watch over this, and they say they're not opposed to the project, but they feel it was sped through the local level too quickly and without enough awareness. What's your thought on that? I'm pleased to report that the Board of Commerce and Industry took a very close look at the concerns that were brought forward by Together Louisiana relative to this tax exemption, which is large, but it's also a $15.9 billion project, one of the biggest investments ever made in Louisiana. And they'll get no abatement uh, until it's uh, uh, online and producing. Uh, but the Board of Commerce and Industry looked at the adoption of the local unanimous police jury resolution, the local school board resolution, the support of the sheriff, and through the local voice provided by the governor in the changes to the industrial uh, tax exemption program, uh, there was unanimous agreement to move forward with this project at that level. Let me ask you about a lot of these uh, companies and a lot of these uh, facilities being built in Louisiana, chemical, petrochemical, uh, liquefied uh, natural gas. That doesn't sound like diversification to me. I know there has been some, of course, with DXC technologies, but it still sounds like it tilts heavily toward the petrochemical industry. Um, I wouldn't. Am I wrong? I, I would not agree with that. Okay. Uh, certainly, what we want to do is two things. To manage a strong economy, we want to keep our fundamentals strong, our agriculture, our forestry, our oil and gas, the things that uh, uh, make a big difference in the economy and that are fully embedded and appropriate. Beyond that, we want to prepare for the economy of tomorrow. So things like advanced manufacturing, uh, information technology, water management. These are growing areas that we can position Louisiana to not let be left behind in uh, economic growth. So environmentally, some of the things that we're continuing to do, um, no concern there with uh, impacting our environment Absolutely in a negative way? Absolutely not in a negative way. We are uh, very stringent in Louisiana to follow the federal rules and regulations and are just as stringent Because uh, we haven't, haven't always been. That's correct. But uh, technology, uh, the responsibility demonstrated by industry uh, convinces me that uh, we're on a pathway that will be sustainable and will protect our environment while we also uh, are able to provide needed elements uh, to the world. There are a lot of number ones uh, that go across the boards when you look at rankings for uh, the Louisiana economy in 2018. Some of the high points that happened this year well, and looking ahead for us. Thank you for that one. Uh, certainly two great number ones uh, for us. First of all, our department went, underwent accreditation this year. So we took a very, very deep dive audit from an international organization that not only came in and tested our budgets and our marketing and, and many of the uh, tools that the legislature gives to us, uh, but also went out and had conversations with our stakeholders.
years, and we are the only state agency in, the, in America today with uh, an accredited organizational uh, notation. Very good. So uh, that was pleasing. Uh, once again, we were identified as having the number one workforce training program in America. And I like to uh, point out that that's not like shooting a bow and arrow at a bullseye on a target. These are moving targets. Other states are rapidly developing excellence in their workforce this training. This is the LED Fast Start and, uh, program. It is, and, and we have, through uh, innovative techniques that we've integrated into Fast Start, the ways that we're able now to better interface with corporations, with our uh, learning institutions, are setting us apart as a, a national leader in workforce training. Uh, Lake Charles is a boom area. That region, southwest Louisiana is, is uh, the capital region is expected to have growth this year. Um, very briefly, is there an area of the state, though, where there's some concerns, perhaps Monroe, perhaps Parts of Shreveport, where there needs to be a, a, a bolstering uh, of uh, economic help there? You make a good point. We um, don't manage the state's economy. We manage a collection of economies, essentially eight economies around the state, and some are faring better than others. And certainly in recent times, uh, Lafayette, uh, again, back to oil and gas production, uh, reduction in workforce, that type of thing. And uh, home of Thibodeau, the, the, the lack of activity in the Gulf, where work boats and uh, other logistics supply uh, uh, headquarters are, uh, those areas have suffered. Uh, Central Louisiana, Northwest Louisiana, Northeast Louisiana remain very important targets for us to continue to do all that we can to uh, grow their economies. Fortunately, uh, Monroe area with the IT opportunities they have around CenturyLink. In Shreveport, we had to backfill the exit of Continental Express Jet, who had uh, the maintenance contract for uh, Continental and uh, United uh, Airlines. They lost that contract and suddenly were faced with 250 aviation mechanics that couldn't go to work. Uh, we landed Western Global Airlines. You may not have heard of them, but that's because most of their packages are FedEx and UPS. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we continue to really focus on uh, the ways that we can either grow our economy, keep our small business or fill in the gaps, workforce strong, and, uh, and, and certainly try to uh, partner with these communities to find new opportunities and growth areas uh, where they can be successful. Hey, we look forward to 2019. It's going to be hearing more year. from you. Thank you. Thanks, Don. The 165-foot-tall spire of St. Joseph Cathedral is easy to spot along the skyline of downtown Baton Rouge. The cathedral has withstood the Civil War, hurricanes, expansions, and renovations. Father Paul Counts shares the history of it, which comes from LPB's Art Rocks archives. St. Joseph Cathedral Church that you see now is the third church that the parish has had. The first one was in the late 1790s, the second one about 1830. They started the cornerstone of this church in 1853 and it took three years to build. The architect of the church was a Jesuit priest, Father John Cambiasso. He has designed many churches throughout the South, most notably the Jesuit church on Barone Street in New Orleans, a completely different style of church. The fact that he could do more than one style shows his talent. The church, of course, has been expanded and redone a number of times. During the Civil War, it was shot up by Union gunboats on the river that were very, very accurate. After the war, we had to put a new roof on, a new back wall on. This was basically still just a very big square building until they put in the steeple in 1890 and put in the stained glass windows and mosaics in the early part of the 1900s. The overall architecture of St. Joseph Cathedral Church is what's called neo-Gothic or faux Gothic. It's not real Gothic in the sense that they have flying buttresses holding up the walls. It's all done with brick and stone. To be honest, St. Joseph Cathedral is a red brick church. They plastered over it on the outside, put stucco on the outside back in the 1800s because uh, it gave a more uniform appearance. And of course, there's white brick here on the interior. Very exquisite brickwork. Most of the stained glass windows were fabricated between 1916 and 1922. In Germany, some of them 
during the First World War, and we were at war with Germany at the time, but we were able to have them fabricated, shipped to neutral Switzerland, and then shipped on to the United States, even during that difficult moment of history. They are stained glass in the sense that each little pane of glass is a particular color, but they're also painted stained glass, which gives you the depth of detail in each scene. And you can see the delicacy of the features in their faces and the folds of their robes. One thing I'd like to point out is the mosaic stations of the cross. They sometimes are sort of overlooked because the windows are so bright on either side of them. But each station of the cross is made up of thousands of little bitty tiny pieces of tile making up a scene from the passion of the Lord Jesus. If you're looking up, you're noticing the wooden roof of the church. Most of those beams and a lot of the ceiling decking is original to the cathedral's renovation after the Civil War. The last major renovation of the church is what you can see in the distance behind me, the marble sanctuary, which was done in accord with the dictates of the Second Vatican Council. At that time in the Catholic Church, it became much more common for Mass to be said, facing the people with people gathered around the altar. And of course, in 1961, poor old St. Joseph Church became St. Joseph Cathedral because St. John XXIII, the Pope at the time, named this to be the Cathedral Church of the new Diocese of Baton Rouge. The sanctuary itself features a huge crucifix by the Croatian sculptor Mestrovic, Ivan Mestrovic. I guess you could probably agree that you couldn't just put a cross like that in anyone's living room. You need to have the space for it. We happen to have the space for it. And Bishop Tracy, our first bishop, was proud to be able to obtain that big mahogany crucifix and to enable a, an African-American sculptor, head of the arts department at Southern University, Frank Hayden, helped in putting together the cross that the body of Jesus sits on and hang it up there. And now we've reached the last thing that was put into the church. In 1992, to celebrate the 200th anniversary of the parish, Father Frank Uter and the congregation at the time installed the massive Reuter organ. It is a grand organ in the French style that we put in as a present to ourselves on our 200th birthday. It puts out wonderful sound for our regular worship services and the occasional concert. Natchitoches to the south and Marshall, Texas to the west. For people in Shreveport, the largest city of the Arklatex, it's just a short drive to see some of the best Christmas light displays anywhere. Marshall illuminates for its Wonderland of Lights Christmas Festival. In this video essay, Producer Christina Anderson captures the essence of the wonder.
You can see why people enjoy it. Marshall's Wonderland of Lights continues through December 30th. Each December, the governor and first lady of Louisiana host a concert at the governor's mansion that highlights one aspect of our state's diverse culture. This year marked the 300th birthday of New Orleans, and so recording artist John Boutte was on hand to perform the title song from HBO's hit series Treme. It's a song Boutte wrote. I wrote this tune in 1993, and, and nobody had ever written a song and mentioned the historic African-American neighborhood Treme. So 1993, I'm sitting on my porch, having my coffee, and I hear a brass band coming down the street playing a dirge. They were taking a, a body out of St. Augustine Church and bringing it home. And I sat down and I scribbled this little silly tone, tune, and I knew it, was, it meant something, but I didn't know when it was going to come to fruition, but it did. And I want to thank everybody, especially HBO. <laughs> well, hanging in a tree, make watching people sashay past my steps by my porch in front of my door. Church bells are ringing, quiet is a scene while a preacher groans and sisters moan. Great job, John Boutte. If you want to hear more of that, LPB will bring you the entire concert from the mansion December 25th, Christmas night at 9.30, and then again Friday night, December 28th at 8.30. During the holidays, the mansion is all decked out in a festive salute to Louisiana. First Lady Donna Edwards gives us a brief tour. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. I'm First Lady Donna Edwards and welcome to the Governor's Mansion, a magical place and a very active, especially this time of year, here at Christmas. The mansion, which is the people's house, really comes alive during Christmas. Each year has been dedicated to a special theme, including celebrating our French and Spanish heritage. And this year we celebrated the New Orleans Tricentennial. So in the drawing room, we have the children's tree. And what's really neat about this tree is that we send out these blank wooden ornaments throughout the state um, to different schools, and they send them back all decorated. So this year with the uh, tricentennial and the highlight of New Orleans, we have our jazz musicians with saxophone. They're just magical. And what's really neat about it, on the back, we have the artist who painted this one. So this is a 10th grader from Forest High School. So I just want to thank all of our students throughout Louisiana who took the extra time and of course their art teachers who took the extra time out of class to really highlight um, our New Orleans theme this year. We have another large tree which has highlighted the colors of the French, blue and gold, the Spanish, red and gold, which are woven throughout the tree, um, which are the colors of the tricentennial this year. 
So another beautiful um, display here at the mansion is our nativity scene and so so much fun going into the attic here at the mansion and pulling down things that have been here for 20 plus years and displaying them each year. So people who come to the mansion know to expect the nativity scene. We have the Holy Family when you come into Rotunda. And of course we have the wise men here and we also have the wise men on the camels. Also this year, we added the menorah in celebration of our Hanukkah season. And across the way, we have an Advent candle celebrating the beginning of Christmas. This year, we have seven trees decorated inside and three outside. Hundreds of beautiful lights throughout the mansion, all decorated from a team of volunteers. Anyone can take a drive around the lake and see the beautiful displays. We've added this year the black bear, the brown pelican, a menorah, and don't forget Santa's eight alligators. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from the governor and I and our entire family. We wish you all a very safe and happy season. We also ask that you remember those who need a little extra help this time of year by donating to worthwhile cause in your community. God bless you all and have a wonderful and happy new year. And everyone, that is our show for this week. Remember, you can watch LPB On Demand on your phone or tablet with our LPB Anywhere app. The download's free from your app store, and you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For everyone here at Louisiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Andre Morrow. Thanks so much for watching, and have a very Merry Christmas. Until next time, that's the state we're in. Support comes from... Entergy provides much more than power. We support science and engineering at local schools to build a brighter path to better jobs and help prepare the next generation. Because together, we power life. Entergy. Additional support provided by the Fred B. and Ruth B. Ziegler Foundation and the Ziegler Art Museum located in Jennings City Hall. The museum focuses on emerging Louisiana artists and is an historical and cultural center for Southwest Louisiana. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting, with support from viewers like you.